Hello, I'm Jennifer Lepore, Online Education Manager here at Artist Network, and we are here today in the Artist Network TV studios with Chris Cozen. Chris Cozen's been with us for a couple days here shooting some acrylic mixed media videos, and we are so excited to share her with you so you can learn some more about her. Um, we worked on a top 10 of your favorite go-to right. acrylic techniques. Yeah, everybody needs those, right? Oh, yeah. It's like one after the other, exciting, I gotta have it. The other um, one was based on a book that you worked on with Julie Pritchard. It's called Acrylic Solutions. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure what the video is gonna be titled yet, but it's a great accompaniment to that book. I plan that. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to be sure that <laughs> some of the things we talk about in the book actually get played out in real life for people because it's hard sometimes to capture it from a book. Mm -hmm. Seeing things in action, it mm -hmm. looks a little bit different. That's right. good. And then the third one that we um, just completed moments before this interview was acrylic glazing. And that was a really good, strong focus on different ways to use glazing. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you need an in-depth instructional video that lets you have the time to see all the nuances that are involved in a technique. So the acrylic glazing technique is, and is aimed in that direction. Great. Okay, so I think I wanna just start by going back to your very beginning as a painter. Have you always been painting? Is it something that you did um, since you were a little kid or how did you get started? I can't say I always painted, okay. but I always loved making things and doing art in some form. Um, my father was very artistic and I remember him taking me out as a child and showing me what a tree really looked like. When I came home from school, there were those years you come home from school and the tree looks like a lollipop on top of a stick. And he happened to see one of those pictures that I made in school and he says, come with me, Chrissy. That's what he used to call me. And he said, I want you to see something. And he took me up to a tree and he said, look at the way the tree grows. And I never stopped looking at things from that moment. I must have been about six years old or seven years old. And that moment has stayed with me. Um, all my life since then. And I think about that when I say to people, stop and just look, because if you look long enough, you'll finally see it. And you just have to study things. And I'm a big um, observer of nature. I have a huge garden outside my studio, and I'm always taking pictures of pods and things that I find. I walk in the Huntington Gardens in Pasadena on a regular basis and watch how the cacti develop and how their forms are beautiful, you know, just different than other plants. I like to look at things, and he taught me that. And yeah. I've done art in some way, shape, or form since then. And it seems that a lot of what you're visualizing, as far as the nature we've seen in mm -hmm. some of your paintings as right. well. Right. I abstract mm -hmm. things. I don't, I'm not a, I'm not a person who likes to incorporate all the details because the details are part of life. I like my details to be in color and, and technique rather than in line. So I like to take the basis of a line and abstract it to a certain extent and then use it to develop a composition. And um, I know that you had been teaching for quite a while. Um, a career. As well. I was a career and teacher. Did, did you teach artwork or you, you I was an early out? childhood okay. teacher in some shape or form for almost 40 years. Uh, I started out teaching kindergarten to blind children, which taught me a lot about people and a lot about what we take for granted in terms of visual language. And I learned to describe things very differently to children who couldn't see than I did before. Um, from there, I went into early childhood research and then opened some early childhood programs and then taught college and taught teachers to teach and ran programs where I supervised teachers and um, trained teachers. So I sort of did the gamut of every age from two years to a college age or adults. Now I teach adults art. Um, I miss teaching when I stopped. And um, by coincidence, I had the opportunity to teach a couple of classes when I went to France for an exhibition a few years ago. And that's when I realized that that was what was missing out of my life. Te you know, working in a studio is pretty lonely. There isn't anybody to talk to and you can't say ooh and awe over anything but your own work and it's kind of seems not appropriate to do that at all times. So uh, when I taught those classes, I, I missed the interaction, the excitement, and I said to myself as I flew home um, on the plane, I have to find a way to teach again. And when I got home and I looked through the mail, there was this postcard from Golden Artist Colors uh, looking for a working artist in Southern California, and I thought, I don't have anything to lose. Why don't I just try? Good timing. <laughs> um, 
and I remember um, talking to Patty Brady, who's the director of the program, and she's written some books for you guys. Mm -hmm. And I said, I may not have the degree in art, but I've been a teacher for a very long time, and I can teach anybody anything uh, as long as I have the information to go on. And that's been history since then. Mm -hmm. It's been about seven years now, and it's it's been great for me. Wow. I've enjoyed it. What a wonderful it's, career. Yeah. That's yeah, really Sort neat. of a second time around career. Mm -hmm. um, but it ties things together. You know, the thing I always love to do and the thing I did for that I love doing in another way, putting them together is like golden. And you know, it's really nice. It kind of reminds me of what you had just said about your dad teaching you how to really yeah. look at that tree and then you showing, learning how to show people a new way to see things. and. Mm -hmm. That's really neat, and that leads me to a point that you had made about how art becomes a part of everything and how creativity becomes a part of everything that not just artists do, but people in general. I think the, the strongest um, sort of evidence for keeping creativity and keeping art in school is what it does for your brain. That creative thinking and ability to problem solve and get yourself out of a situation on a canvas or in, a, in the middle of a drawing or in a story, if it's writing that you like to do, those things really promote our ability to be fluid thinkers. Oh. And if we have only rigid thinkers in the world, we're not going to ever grow or expand our possibilities as human beings. And I think that we need to keep arts in the school, all kinds of arts, uh, writing arts, creative arts, woodworking, doesn't matter, as long as we're expanding the possibilities of what we know how to do. That's important to me. Can really give people courage too. Yeah, I think I think courage is important even as we age. Um, we we finish a career and we think, oh, what are we going to do with the rest of our life? Because our lives are so much longer now. Um, I'll be sixty five soon, and I think to myself, you know, my my life's not over for a long time yet. You know, I've, I've got got a lot to do yet. And yet, other people, it's you know, my age are thinking, oh, then my life is done. Find a new career. My gosh, you know, like. Find something else fun to do and exciting. Play with acrylic mixed media. We have a lot of students in the online classes mm -hmm. that I teach with Julie um, in her network that are all ages. They're, they're, they run the gamut of ages. And, and some of them say thank you very much to us for teaching me not to be afraid, not to be afraid to start a painting or to end a painting. That I, I never had the courage, and we talked about courage, never had the courage to really pursue this but you've let me grow and develop at my own pace, and you're there sort of as a gentle support. And I think that's what teachers of art need to do, and not to have so much criticism, but to say, well, if you know, you're not done yet, keep working and keep trying new things and, and be experimental, because experimental art leads us to where we want to be. And that de definitely came across in the videos that you did with us. It was really neat to see that Gosh, you could start with complete chaos and just by a few simple techniques, you're right. creating something that I you love feel that. good about. And, yeah. You can't do that in a lot of things in life. <laughs> but it's really good to be able to do it on something that you actually can hold on to because mm -hmm. so much of our life is spinning out of control at times. You know, like we don't, we can't control the economy. We can't control the government. We can't control sometimes the behavior of our children. We can't do a lot of things. It seems like it's always out of control, but sometimes we can control things and that feels really good. It sure does. Yeah, and it's fun. Well, thank we you should. so much for bringing that fun to us. Oh, and thank you. To all of you, I hope you all have a chance to check out these three videos and the book that Chris has done with Julie Pritchard. And we hope to see you again okay, soon. Okay, I hope so too. Thanks. <laughs> thank you.